A uh, computer science twenty. If you're working on the projectile motion simulation assignment uh, through P5JS or processing, I want to give you a hand on some things to think about and um, just a little cup, a couple tips that might help you along the way here. So I'm going to show this one in P5JS, but it would be the same um, setup with processing. So we've got to get. We can do this a number of different ways. I'll start with kind of the easy one, um, and then I might show uh, in a later video a bit of a harder way to do this, or uh, kind of a, a harder example to work through than just the horizontal motion to start. But the thing to keep in mind through this setup is if we're launching something horizontally, the only reason it's falling to the ground is because of gravity. If we didn't have gravity, um, that object would just continue in motion. And that's kind of Newton's um, first law there. Okay, that objects in motion are going to stay in motion unless there's an unbalanced force on them. So uh, let's try to do kind of just that example first. What does it look like if there wasn't any gravity on here? So if I just had an object moving across the screen without any gravity. So I've got my basic setup here. I've got function. I'm going to display. So I'm going to create uh, a function called display projectile. And I'm going to use my ellipse here. Um, and I'll start this kind of in the top left corner. Um, so I'm going to have my X location, my Y location, because I'm going to have a lot of X and Y. So I kind of want to be specific with my variables. Um, and I want them to be, let's say, 50-50 and see what that looks like. So I'm going to make those global variables. So let X location. Um, and I'll start uh, the X at, let's just say zero is fine. And the Y just a bit lower maybe at just 50. I'll hit play and I don't have anything here. Once again, our most common mistake that I was helping people with, you have to call the function. Oops. So I've got it up in the top there. I'll probably make my screen a bit longer here. So I'll go 800 or so. And now I want to get this to move. And maybe even make this a bit smaller here. 20, 20. And I'll make this a bit bigger too. So uh, I want to make this move. So I'm going to create another function. Part there uh, that's going to move my projectile. So now what do I want to do? I want to have that X location constantly moving. So um, X location plus five for now. Once again, I'm going to call that in my draw. And this would be if I launched my projectile and there wasn't any gravity occurring with this. So nothing kind of set it off to go here. Um, what we do know is there is going to be gravity involved in this. Uh, I also know that I'm going to want to change the speed. So I might as well change this 5 to that X speed. And then I can set that up as well at the top. So for now, I'll leave it as 5. Uh, maybe I'll make it a bit slower, I'll give it two. And then later on we can change that variable depending on a click or a mouse click or um, uh, a keyboard press. So I've got that projectile moving, but I've got a bit of an issue, right? It's just moving in the X location. If I think, okay, well, if I just wanted to move in the Y location, I could do the same thing and add a Y speed here. The only problem, maybe I'll take out the background for a minute just to show what this looks like. That's not the path of a projectile, right? That's adding one kind of to each one. But we know in the Y direction, it's actually accelerating at a quicker pace, or the acceleration is the same, but the velocity is constantly changing. Where in the Y direction, um, or sorry, in the X direction, the X speed is staying the same that whole time. So if it's set to two, it's staying at two the whole time. In the y direction, that two is constantly increasing. It's constantly changing over time here. 